So we're looking at this triple integral, and we want to calculate the volume. So they don't give us lim limits of integration, but they do give us these three boundaries for x, y, and z. So remember from the section that you want the outside integral to just be numbers. The inside integral can be a function of the outer one. And then the farthest one to the inside can be a function of both. So here, we really only have one choice to set up our limits of integration. We need x on the outside, then y, and z. So I'm going to go ahead and add those into the integral signs. And then our inside function just stays the same. And then we just want to write in the order. So I have dz, then dy and dx. So we're going to evaluate the inside integral first. I'm going to go ahead and carry down the second two. So I'll just put them on the outside. Now I just want to look at this. So first we're integrating with respect to z. So that means this x is just a constant. So that term's going to become xz. This one is a z, so it's going to become z to the third. Now we want to evaluate from z equals xy to z equals 0. Oh, other way. 0 to xy. Okay, so I'm just going to plug those in. Carry through my signs. So, plug in xy first. So you get x squared y. And then z to the third just becomes x to the third, y to the third. And then dy and dx just carry through. So now I'm integrating with respect to y. I have a y in each term. So x squared is going to be like a constant. So we're going to be looking at x squared y squared over 2. And for the next one, similarly, x to the third, y to the fourth, over 4. So now we're ready to evaluate. Here our bounds are y equals 0 to y equals x. Let's go ahead and write those in. And the dx is still tagging along. Okay. So plug in x everywhere I see a y. So this has become x to the fourth over 2. And then x to the seventh over four. The lower bound's just zero, so we're not gonna have any terms. Okay. I'm just gonna rewrite this. Now we're going to integrate with respect to x. So I'm looking at x to the fifth over 10 plus x to the eighth over 32. And then, I'm evaluating from x equals 1 to x equals 0. So the first term, just plug in a 1 everywhere I see an x. So I'm looking at 1 tenth plus 1 over 32. x equals 0, so the rest of the terms aren't going to be there. And then if I add these together, so that's probably really awkward. That'll be 21 over 160. And that's our answer.